Welcome back. This is Terry Miller with Terry's Tidbits. And today we are continuing our series on transitioning from Process Builder to Lightning Flow. In today's videos, we are going to talk about updating records, and we're going to do it in a two-part series. So this first one is going to be looking at how we update records within the object that triggered our flow. So let's start off by looking at the cheat sheet. And again, the cheat sheets are available at terrystidbits.com. Uh, the blog posting that talks in detail about this particular workflow is also found there. You'll see that there is a single blog post in this particular case. I felt it was just easier to put it all together in one. But your cheat sheets are going to be divided into two parts that I mentioned in the intro, uh, as well as the videos that you're seeing today. So the cheat sheets, just as a reminder, on the... Uh, Left-hand side is what you might expect to see in Process Builder. The right-hand side is how it would look to do that same uh, function in Process Builder. And in this case, we've got a little bit of dialogue that takes place because there are some unique differences here uh, that are a part of the updating records. So let's jump over to our Process Builder, take a quick look at what we are going to be working with today. And we have a couple of decisions that we're going to take a look at. The first one is going to be the one that we actually build out. And this uh, is the customer uh, priority. We're going to set that to high when our CSTAT rating is unsatisfied. Last week, we built out this decision. This week, we are going to build in the actions for when that occur. The second one that we're going to look at, look at, I already have built out, and that is simply a checkbox that says when the shipping address is the same as the billing address, there's a little checkbox there that will copy the billing address over to shipping, and that looks very, very sim simple here as well. So again, this is updating object or updating records that are in the same object that triggered our flow. So that's what it looks like in Process Builder. Let's take a look at our flow. Here's our decision that we built last week where our CSTAT rating equals unsatisfied. And we have our two outcomes, one unsatisfied and one that's simply continue. And you can see that we've got our two different paths that take place. In decisions, this is a little bit broader than what we had in Process Builder because Process Builder only had that true-false option. In this case, we only have two as well, so you can kind of think of the unsatisfied as our true path, continue as our false path that just is going to continue down to our next decision. So let's go ahead and, and get started with our first um, updating of a record. And I'm going to click on the little plus symbol. And you might be looking in here thinking, wait, I don't see an update record. And that is true. We are in the before trigger, and there is not an update record here. So why is that? Well, the reason is because in the before trigger, if you remember our order of operations, we haven't saved this record yet. So there is no record to update yet. And so all we need to do is modify the values that are going to be saved once we hit that save, once the actual save portion of our, of our uh, transaction occurs. So we're going to use an assignment, and the assignment is going to set the values that will be saved once we hit that part of the process. You'll notice that in Flow, it's called a label. And if we jump back to Process Builder, it's simply called the name. So same concept, different label, and you're gonna see that throughout our time as we look at flow. Same things, but maybe called something slightly different. Now in Process Builder, we are setting the field customer priority to this pick list value high. If we jump back over to our flow, 
we have a very similar thing down here, but they call them variables. And a variable is, although it sounds like a programmer term, and it is, but it, it's, it shouldn't be something that confuses you. And I want to give you just a simple analogy that might help you understand variables. Think of a variable as a drawer that you might have in a dresser. You put something in that drawer and you can come back to that drawer and take that out or use it, whatever might be the scenario that you need. Same concept here. We store a value into a variable and we can come back and use that when we need to. To take it just a little bit of a step further, if you take, think of your entire dresser, you've got multiple drawers, you can, in this particular use case, think of that dresser as the account record and the drawers are the various different fields that you have on the account. You put something in those different drawers, say an account name goes in one drawer, the, in this use case, the priority is gonna go in another drawer, and we can then have a definition of the account record that we're going to be working with. That's what's happening here with an assignment. Because we haven't saved it yet, we're just storing values in that dresser drawers. And then we're going to be able to let Salesforce, once it hits that save portion of our transaction, it's going to look at the, all of those dressers, drawers, and it's going to simply update those uh, when it hits that part of the order of execution. If you're not familiar with what I'm referring to with order of execution, go back and watch that um, first series that we did on getting started with flows where we talk about the difference between the before and the after. There's also a video out there on, on my site specifically about order of execution. So that explains what's happening when you hit that save button. Here we're doing assignments again as is a refresher. We're doing assignments because we have not reached that point of the order of execution that has saved the record yet. It's not been committed so we're just working with it in memory. So let's go ahead and look at the variable field here. And you'll see that we've got a couple different things listed here. And they are called global variables. And the one that I really want to focus on is the dollar record. And dollar record is your friend. Remember, dollar record is your friend. It is wonderful. It is the um, dresser, in <laughs> some speak, that represents the record that triggered our flow. So in this particular case, we're working on the account. The account is our dollar record. And if we click into that, you will see all of our account fields. And we're simply looking for priority. So I'll start, start typing that in. And here's our customer priority field. That is the drawer in our dresser. And it's going to be set equal to the value of high. And we'll, we'll, we will just simply click done. And we will have now completed our assignment. Very simple on updating a, a value within the record that triggered our flow. So let's continue down here uh, just as a uh, a way of kind of re seeing what it looks like once it's actually saved. So we have another decision element that I added to this flow. And if I click on it, I can click edit. And you will see that we have two outcomes. One is update shipping address. The other is don't update the shipping address. Here's our label or the name. And it simply it says that if the dollar record, our uh, account object, Shipping address, same as billing, that is a field on our account. If that equals true, then I want to go down this update shipping uh, path. If it is not true, we would just go down the default outcome, which is don't update shipping. Okay, so that's our decision, one path, the second path. And in this case, I can click on the assignment and you can see we've got multiple values that we are updating here. And you'll notice that I'm using dollar record again because it is our friend. And we have our shipping address equals our billing address. We've got all of five of those address elements there. And then the last one we are doing is we're resetting the shipping address, same as billing, the checkbox from equals to false. Hope that helps you understand the 
first part of if we are working in a before trigger, if we're working on uh, making updates to the record that triggers our flow, then we're just simply using an assignment. In the next video, we are going to continue looking at updating records, but we are going to look at updating records that are different than the one that triggered our flow. So take a look at that video, and remember to subscribe if these have been helpful for you. Thanks a lot.